Okay. And so we've got so and uh, you can use the text. There's a. If you look at a, you'll see uh, if you hover your mouse from the top on the left there, you'll see the pointer. You'll also see uh, freehand. The, ignore the freehand, but just under the freehand, you'll see text. So if you could just click on the text and then click on the whiteboard, and you're ready to go. Yeah, Nelly, I'm on a small computer and I cannot see all the answers and shit. I don't know why. I, I, I can uh, help you with blocked. that. If, or anyone else yeah. who needs help with the chat, just put your mouse or finger, whatever you're using there, on the gray part, the top part of the chat, and move it to the center or somewhere. Okay. And then pull it on the left and the right the way you do with images and make it larger. This way, oh, okay. you can pull it all okay. in all directions, up, down. Oh. Just make it larger. Okay. Yeah, and then you can yeah. see. Uh, and then move okay, it. so now, yeah, now I see, yes. Um, uh, yes. Yeah, in evaluations and community evaluations, internal evaluation, yes. Um, Authentic learning, learning that comes from actual experience, wonderful answers. And so this, uh, oops, this text is blocking. Um, okay. Wait, and let me just, uh, wait, sorry about that. Let me take away everybody's rights and then yeah. take back writing controls and then we'll have more control. Yeah. There we go. Okay, and it's wonderful answers. And so let's uh, let's move this a little bit. I'll just I, I got rid of it there. Okay, um, now that you have to move. Uh, somehow my uh, my tool is not uh, working. I try to click next slide. Okay, next. let me do that. All right. Okay. Oops. No. Uh, there should be one more. Yeah, I'm uh, gonna get rid of this. Yeah. So there, it's animated, and it should be. It, this yellow box should open the answers right, about the authentic. Yeah. If oh, no, you, if you click up, oh, I wonder why oh, it didn't work. Wait, it yeah. should work. Wait, let me try. Well, anyway, yeah, so uh, as far as well, if you go back, so let's let's discuss. So if if um if it's extend uh ex uh, I'm trying to do right. it again. No, I'll just stay here. We will, yeah, um, let's see if it works now. If you click again, it doesn't. All right. So, and next. It should no, it won't. Oh, no, it didn't. It's okay. So, go back and we will just discuss. So, it, it, uh, as, far as, as far as authentic learning is concerned, it's not about evaluation. It's, it's about the process of students learning. It's, it's uh, ongoing assessment and uh, ongoing feedback of students who are learning and uh, today's technology and uh, helps really helps to see uh, immediate results of students learning it's not one single uh, answer and uh, the teachers who are creating community of um, inquirers and um, authentic learning it's all about inquiry and equipping students with inquiry skills and researching skills and creativity uh, creativity so uh, the, they create problems and projects for students to to get multi multi answers so it's about it's it's not about individuals well alongside with individuals it's about collaboration it's about group efforts so that students learn how to communicate like in real life that's what authentic is it's it's aligning everything with real life situations with real life projects it's not paper pencil test it's it's ongoing feedback uh, students to a teacher and from the teacher or from the professor to students um, and uh, selecting and the response so it's not it's not about really catching students when they are wrong uh, one of my students was um, doing her summer research 
uh, recently, and she was actually one of one of the questions was about uh, online learning, about uh, current technology, and she was interviewing Mary as a guru of technology. And uh, later on, she was also um, in um, interviewing Vicky Davis. Uh, Mary also had her some uh, some time ago on her in her program and her podcast. And what uh, Vicky said that she uses technology for uh, really authentic assessment and she gets the feedback right away uh, using different tools like a Hoot, like a Socrative or any other tools. So that's what authentic learning is. And when we, Nelly and I, when we design our workshops, that's what our workshops is about. It's It's like today, so you are all participating and learning about the tools, about the ways how to engage students in active learning. And our workshops, we give a little bit of introduction to a workshop. And then our learners who are in our workshops, whether it is in person, face to face, or um, online, they immediately are uh, creating things. That's what authentic learning is. It's not about memorizing. It's not about rote learning. It's about uh, creating things, producing things. And when, when students create things, they really learn. So, Nelly, we can move to the next slide. Yeah, and well, wanted, the next slide is about Ludmilla, our... I wanted to say, um, sorry. What I wanted to say, yeah. add here, if I yeah. may, is that with authentic learning and Ludmilla and I saw this um, in Vancouver when we gave uh, the last workshop that because they're doing and they're not just sitting there listening to the expert, so-called expert, they, there's a love. You know, a lot, a lot of you have mentioned love as, as being uh, very important. Danny also mentioned love. But what happens is they learn to love each other and love us. So it does become a kind of family where you connect and you connect, whether it continues afterwards is another story, but while you're doing the workshop and throughout the conference, we would be connected and they were connected with each other. So the the doing or creating, it's more, it's more of a creating because you're not really just doing. Doing is, you know, you can pick up your your pencil and do, but it's actually creating, learning, um, instructional Products. learning actually wakes them up. And um, using Moodle is just a, a tool, you know, that opens the door, but it, it's not about Moodle. It's not about um, using the tools. It's about allowing yourself to make mistakes, to try things out, and feel comfortable. And I think that's where the role that Ludmilla and I play is to get them to feel comfortable, to provide them with one-on-one -on -one support while they're working, and then allow them to help each other. And that's what happens during the, uh, the workshop. Ludmilla? Yeah. And, well, during our workshop, we also... I, I was just, on Friday, I was giving a talk about creating community. And that's what Nelly was mentioning, is that in the beginning of the workshop, in the beginning our um, workshop, we create this environment of support and trust and respect. So they are given a task to create a little, um, little uh, a video or a little... A project that uh, shows who they are and they have to post on the discussion forum and then we all look and we present so right away so they are right away they are in, in engaged in, in in the process of learning and they they already through that that experience they learn how to use the tool and how to introduce themselves and feel comfortable with each other so they know they they all join the workshop for the same goal, to learn what Moodle is, uh, to learn how to use it effectively. And through that activity in the beginning, 
so they immediately engaged in the process and and uh, in the process of creating that community of trust, respect, and uh, a professional collaboration. Yes. So uh, we can move to the next. Uh -huh. Because uh, and so idea, this is the description. The idea uh, that Ludmilla and I have is to get them to relate to each other as people. In other words, you have students in your classroom, whether it's face to face or online, but we're talking about face to face specifically. Nobody knows anybody. Nobody connects with anyone. If you have hundreds of students in your class, it doesn't matter what the numbers are. Our goal was to get them to connect and learn together, but not just learn whatever the content is, but to learn about their relationship to each other. In other words, learn about themselves, how they relate to other people. They don't even have to verbalize it, but we saw it happening. We saw it in their faces. We saw it in their body language. We saw how these people, you know, became a community, in fact, because they were helping each other. They were, they were going beyond what you would expect from a Moodle, you know, a technological workshop. And that's what, uh, yeah. what is so amazing. We divided, if I may, Ludmilla, we divided the workshop into um, sections on the Moodle. One was for the teachers to practice as teachers. The other one was to practice as managers. And then to create their own courses and present what they had done. And I think the fact that they had to present, and you know, if, if we had said it before, like with math, I'm going to give you a test, they would have left the room. But by the end of the workshop, they were so warmed up and ready to, you know, it was, there, there was no embarrassment or any kind of inhibition. They just went up there, whether they were ready or not, and they were ready to share and they couldn't care less whether it was perfect or whether they made mistakes or not. And it was just beautiful to watch people uh, come out of their shells and turn into, yeah. and, you know, wonderful human beings who could just, you know, show love to one another. But it also was a very, in, immediately we saw that we achieved the goal of this environment of collaboration and community. Uh, when uh, we also had a little bit of um, estimating or evaluating what what the level of comfort with Moodle is, and when we saw that some, uh, some educators already had some experience, some just came to learn about it, and then when they started creating those little projects, uh, and somebody was ahead of time, somebody was behind. And then uh, we encouraged uh, those who were ahead to help those who were um, kind of behind. And it was amazing to see how quickly they connected and how they could help each other. And, um, and then it, it really uh, it inspires us <laughs> and make, make our uh, workshop uh, more interesting and creative. So let's go to the next. And um, so that's what Nelly was saying that we first had. Was, and uh, one, of the, one of the aspects to create a not competitive, but more kind of gamification, <laughs> uh, game related uh, environment. Uh, and more authentic because that's what life is about. It's about competition. Uh, it was amazing to observe these grown-up people, learners, educators. They uh, they were so obsessed of getting their badge. So, <laughs> and uh, after each part of the workshop, they had to complete a task, either at a discussion forum or they had to post something or make a choice or something so any activity they did they were uh, immediately uh, they saw if the, if the assignment is completed they would get a badge and they were really concerned why don't I get a badge what's happening I completed this task what's happening there was some uh, technical difficulty <laughs> yes Nelly Nelly of course joke jo 
<laughs> I don't have any tools, so you, you can do it. Jen, Jen was saying that even experts can keep learning. Well, that's true, Jen. But the thing is that we've had experiences in workshops where the experts would kind of, you know, make faces and, um, and kind of think, well, you know, you're not going to teach me anything new. I know it all. But because you get them, you know, um, collaborating and you get them to go beyond their, uh, you know, their normal state, which is to kind of, you know, not be vulnerable, but to uh, stay, uh, you know, kind of cold and, and to shut down. Instead, they opened up, which is really unusual. I found it very unusual that experts could find something good in something. But the idea is to get them to feel that they're willing to open up. It's not that easy to open up um, unless, you know, you, you kind of get warmed up. They need help. The badges were also to keep them on track. We only had four, <laughs> four hours, and you'd think four hours is enough. But, you know, when you're having fun, time flies, and that's what happened. So the reason the badges were useful, not just uh, as a game, but they kept them uh, on task, and that's what we wanted. We wanted them to eventually complete the uh, the workshop and uh, and get their work. Uh, Ludmila, you want to talk about Padlet, one of my our favorite. Uh, yeah. So tools. well, yeah. It's it's a, it's a wonderful tool. Uh, Padlet is a is a board where students you you can create a board board and uh, give students assignment and they can answer questions you can do it before lesson or lesson during lesson and what what we were using uh, uh, Padlet for is to uh, learners were creating uh, creating their projects and they uh, were invited to post their projects on that wall and it's it's amazing why we could have used Moodle, of course, but our task was also create authentic experience and introduce a new tool that you can use during the lessons and during your course uh, design. So students, and you immediately can see all the pair on the wall. You can see their reflection. You can they can add video. They can add text. They can add. It's a it's a poster board. It's a it can be notes post or it's a, it's but it's a multimedia tool and that's what we did we created that um, that wall uh, wall of faith so to say and that's <laughs> the learners in the workshop they were posting their projects and it was easy to present because they they were coming up to the screen and they would add, uh, click on their link and they will present their project that they created. Or they, at first, they were small projects they were designing. When they learned about the tools, it was not just, it was not just, uh, okay, you get a tool and you, you get a check. The, the, the major thing is to, to make them feel proud of what they created. And when they were sharing, they, they first of all, they used the tool they didn't know. For example, we used Screencast-O-Matic. We used uh, one of the students. She had a um, Pauline. She was, what country, Nelly, she was from. She was, um, and she had a, a computer that was not aligned with the. Um, she was from the Caribbean, with the, if I'm not mistaken. She was from yeah, the Caribbean. Yeah, and, right. So she, her computer didn't accept Screencast-O-Matic. So we found other tools. We introduced her to MoveNote. We introduced her to Animoto. So, but she was also so, so determined because everybody created a created tutorial. She she did to do it too. So and uh, so she in the end she created them. She she presented alongside with others, so it's it's really so. These are the tools um, that we uh, during our workshop and during our uh, courses online. So screen screencast-o-matic, slides, beach, Plotagon, and um, so the Vimeo uh, site. Some some or YouTube. So some uh, countries do not. 
uh, except YouTube and Vimeo is more acceptable than other uh, websites. So that's why we try to adjust the tools that we are using to the conditions that uh, our um, learners are from. So and and uh, so this is these are this is our group and this is our workshop um, and uh, you, you see how students are uh, working uh, with the, on the projects and then uh, this uh, bottom uh, last page I think you've Miller uh, uh, last okay shows how they are presenting Ludmilla, your audio is slowing down. Um, yeah. Do you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. It was kind of uh, slowing down. Yeah, and this is this is the video. Uh, I would like, uh, Nelly, do you have the link? Is it? Um, so let me let me check. Yeah, uh, uh, it's on uh, the uh, on the drive. We have our. Oh, wait a minute! Wait a minute! Did you send it to me, Ludmilla? Because I don't see it here. Well, it's it's in the it's in the the it's in our um, PowerPoint presentation. No, but that's um, it's yeah, dead. Look. The PowerPoint it's, presentation it's from the, can't be shown. Okay, I'm I'm okay. You can you can continue. I will I will find it in uh, soon, and I will post on on the in the chat. Uh, it's right here. I think this is it. I found it. Oh no, it's um. Uh, in any case, we also created a uh, feedback survey. Now, if you notice, those of you who have taken uh, Moodle MOOCs uh, on Moodle for Teachers, anyone here, uh, if you give me a thumbs up, I'll tell you a little bit about uh, Moodle MOOC. Because it's basically, it's almost the same, even though we keep changing the Moodle MOOCs so that they're not always the same and you can always learn. By the way, the next Moodle MOOC is in November and the Moodle is now, the Moodle that we use was Moodle 3.1, when that was 3.0. But this one, the one that we have now that we're going to use in November is 3.1. It's almost the same, but there's a difference because um, of face to face. Face to face does make a uh, difference. Yes, Ludmilla, sorry. Yeah, absolutely. So I found the link. I'm sending the link, and so you all can click on the link, and it's um, I post it on the Facebook, so you can. Oh, great. Um, oh, great. Yeah. Excellent. All right, so if you ever Working want to try a face-to-face -face, um, workshop with us, invite us, and uh, we'll give it to you and your uh, staff. It's really quite an experience. The only thing, Ludmilla, that I find, um, you know, it's, it's, there's a lot of energy. The teachers do a lot. You know, it's very intense for the teacher or the facilitators because you have to run around from one to one and you have to, you have to keep, you work hard physically um, and you've got to support them uh, right away. You have to be there. Uh, the only thing is that it's more exciting for the students than for the teacher. I mean, it's exciting for the teacher at the end when the students present, but during the workshop, it's kind of boring <laughs> because, you know, you're kind of like running around. You're not really enjoying yourself until the end. And the students are enjoying themselves, which is exactly what we want. We want our students to be doing the teaching and, and to be actively engaged and not us. So you kind of have to get used to, um, you know, letting go and uh, letting the students do the work. Yeah, and that's what authentic learning. It, it it's. Uh, I love this expression. The less we teach, the more they learn. Exactly. So what it means is that if you give them the tools, and they you you are not teaching, but you 
engaging them. You are encouraging them. That's what, when that's really authentic learning, when they, they learn by doing, by, that's, that's what counts. And, um, so that's, uh, and, and it's, uh, important. Nelly, Nelly studied, uh, the conversation, uh, and just a, a minute ago about feedback. It, it's it's important to always create conditions for immediate feedback because it shows that you care. Then students need to have their voice heard. So it's important. And, and for a teacher, if you are a good teacher, so you want to know if students really enjoyed the process, if they were comfortable, if they, um, or they had some issues that, you probably didn't, didn't notice. And in order to do it something differently next time, you have to have their voice heard. I just wanted to so, add, uh, yeah, I want to also add sure. that, you know, one of the students there, I thought he was the toughest guy in the world. But at the end, <laughs> not, of the, uh, not of, of the workshop, the end of the conference, he came up to me and he hugged me. And I thought, oh, my God, you know, this is an older man hugging me like you would hug a mother. And, and that's, what, that's what we are. <laughs> We're mothers, you know, to our students. Uh, you can't get away from that. And, and, and that's the kind of connection that you develop face-to-face uh, -face because you can't hug Virtually, you can only hug uh, face to face. So, Ludmilla, <laughs> well, we're going to end I want to, so I can. I, I want. Yes, yeah, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I want. I want to remind you. I I want to remind you. One year we uh, agreed to do a workshop, but I had a conference in Czech Republic, and I went to do workshop on on Moodle. It was a Moodle conference, and when I was there, uh, I connected with Nelly. It was kind of joint workshop online, and it was in person. Uh, so Nelly was um, moderating e online, and I was in person. And then the participants uh, asked Nelly, Nelly, what would you do if you were here? Or uh, just say what you would like to, um, and she said, I would like to hug Ludmilla. I, I was, I was crying. <laughs> yeah, that's how it is. A lot of hugs in face-to-face -face conferences, especially at Ed Media. So if you get a chance, come to Ed Media. That's where we hug and dance, yes. of course. <laughs> All right. So, Ludmilla, All right. thank you. So now, we're gonna, yeah, we're going to move now. Um, so you can mute your mic. And um, yes. yeah, we're going to move on to um, the next part, which is uh, the closing of uh, MMVC16. If I can find the um, presentation here. By the way, all the presentations are on the Moodle website. So Ludmilla, you can help with the links if you don't mind. Can you, can you um, uh, mute your webcam yeah okay great all right so the, oh no it's not good enough no it's not gonna work okay it doesn't matter it's not i thought that we could get it bigger okay so let me get rid of my uh there i'll get rid of that so we don't need a webcam all right so first of all i want to thank everybody uh so much for uh being on mmvc and i'd like to um tell you what's next. Starting tomorrow, uh, August 8, it's not ending by any means uh, because uh, you're going to get your certificates. You'll be able to access, and I'll be talking about the webinars, feedback, reflections, and certificate in that order. So you'll have a chance to go into the webinars. Thank you, Judy. Uh, take the feedback, in other words, answer the questions, reflect on five 
uh, of the webinars and their questions and how to reflect. And then you get your certificate and it's all automatic. And that's what's nice about Moodle. Now, if you haven't already gone into the Moodle uh, course or conference area, let me share the link with you. So far, we've got 179 participants in MMVC on the Moodle. So there are lots of people there. It's a chance to connect. Um, most of them are educators, but maybe some are also uh, tech people and administrators. Well, you'll be able to find out. So the first thing you need to do is realize that you don't need to remember a password or your username. You simply click on either Facebook, Gmail, or LinkedIn. Do not use all three because you'll be able to go in with all three but you'll have three different accounts. So if you want to get your certificate, go in with one each time, the same one, whether it's Google, Facebook, or LinkedIn, but use the same login. I think, Judy, you've got two logins, but since, uh, so you might want to decide which one, and then let me know so that uh, it doesn't complicate things. But since you you were a presenter, you get your certificate without doing anything because you've done everything by presenting. So presenters don't have to do anything to get their uh, certificates. Then you'll notice in the center there are the tabs and you go into each of these tabs. Uh, you need to introduce yourself, you need to um, fill in the feedback and reflect. That's all. And then you get your certificate in the certificate area. So basically, you're going into each of these sections, introduction, feedback, and reflections, and then you go into your certificate. If you're a presenter, and I think Ebba, I think I saw Ebba, Judy's here. Anybody else? Here? Any of the other presenters here? You get your, um, Ludmilla's here. You'll be getting your Anna's here, of course. Anyone else? Yeah, Ebba. So you'll get your certificate. It's a little bit different. And notice on the right, um, there is information here in the latest news, so you might want to read that. If you have any questions, you can use the comment box to ask questions. And there's the certificate. It's a certificate of achievement. You'll have your name, so make sure that your name is the way you want it. If you've got a few names, first, second, third, fourth, and so on, I know that some people have really long names. Uh, if you want your title, like uh, EDD or DR or professor, whatever, make sure that that's in your profile and that it has your name. You can change your profile. You reflect on five of the webinars in a blog post. So if you don't have a blog, maybe it's time you got a blog. Blogs are free. You can get uh, Google. How many of you don't have anyone not have a blog? Give me a thumbs up if you got one, a thumbs down if you don't. The reason uh, it's a good idea to have a blog is because it allows you to have this with you when uh, MMVC is over. You can continue working until the end of the month, until the end of August. Okay, so Carolina, you might want to get a blog. You can get Blogger. I like, uh, uh, tum well, you can get Tumblr. You have one you don't use. So this is your chance. Yeah, Blogger. There's Google. If you have a Google account, then if you go into Google, you'll be able to see that there's Blogger. You just click on You have one whether you know it or not, if you have a Gmail account. So you and that's it. So I'd like to thank the presenters. We had 20 presenters from 15 countries. You can see that different ages, uh, gender, we had a combination of everything. By the way, um, our presenter from Malaysia, Anita Adnan, apologizes. She made a mistake and she wrote herself down for 3 a.m. in Malaysia. She contacted me at 4 a.m. in the morning because she couldn't sleep. She felt that there was something wrong. And so she's going to create a video 
and we'll share that video with you uh, as soon as it's uh, done. And hopefully she'll be able to present maybe in November. And that's it. Thank you. And if anybody recognizes the flowers in the back, these are my flowers. Um, what I did was um, I planned to take a photo of the flowers, but they fell. So I put them on another... Um, you can see that they're on something else. So that's how I got the flowers there for you. So thank you, thank you, and thank you. Because this, no, it's not lavender, it's rosemary. But I put a different, rosemaries uh, don't have such uh, flowers. So I just took the, the flowers and I stuck them on the, uh, on the rosemary bush and I took a photo. So it, the rosemary, right? It wouldn't, um, it wouldn't be what it was without you. So it really, um, it's uh, the presenters and the uh, participants. Ludmilla, you can come back, and the participants who uh, make the difference. So thank you. Um, I don't. Did I? There it is. So we're getting ready for MMVC 17, and you're all invited to speak, of course, and to attend as participants. It's going to be, the date is uh, August 4th to the 6th, 2017. So you can start planning. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for making MMVC again such a success. Thank you. Thank you, Judy. Thank you, everyone. These are claps for you guys. Thank you. And we started, by the way, we started a uh, Facebook group for uh, Danny's family, math and art and music, of course. Uh, Danny's um, family, math family, or family math. But I called it mathematics. Thank you, Tsiana. I'm looking forward, we'll be talking on the Moodle, so this doesn't end, just the virtual classes uh, end today. Bye for now.